There's nothing attracts electricians to an electrical wholesaler more than free coffee, a free bacon sandwich, and especially a free calibration day. And that's what's going on here. Like herds of wildebeest to a watering hole, these test meters from miles around Skipton have turned up today here at Oldfield Electrical. Now, I had a conversation with Rick a few days ago, and I said, well, they don't really do anything on calibration. They just sort of plug them in, check them works, and stick a sticker on and pack you on your way with your free bacon sandwich and some pamphlets from the manufacturers outside. However, I think there's a bit more to it than that, as we're about to find out with our friends from Test Instrument Calibration. We're in the back office nerve center of today's calibration event, where we've got Neil and Johnny busy with over 150 testers. Now, how do you test a tester? Well, you need a box like this. So we've got a calibrator here, which Neil's kindly told me just to put anybody off wanting to do their own calibration. There's about 25 grand's worth of kit sitting here, and there's another one over there. So this is probably the most expensive room in terms of hardware in the entire wholesaler's building. So Neil describes this as a house in a box and can replicate all of the tests that you would use your multifunction tester for. And how does it know what test to use it for? It can download each manufacturer's data to the tester so we can replicate those test data. Now we've just done an insulation tester and it takes you through all of the different voltages and various values that you'd expect to get out of the tester. Failures to typically see on a tester. The most common failures are poor leads because of muck which creates a resistance which hires the result which then goes over spec and fails so we have our own leads that are tuned or the resistance is tuned into the calibration software the tester then passes normally on that and then we would check the customer's leads especially if they say they've got a query on that lead batteries being low right and then what happens then is um you'll get a false result or the readings will bounce around erratically old testers relay failure or mechanical switch failure. Yeah. That's the most common. Okay, so yes. three tips there. Look after your leads, change your batteries, and keep it in the case when you're not using it, and keep the case clean. Yes, yeah. And avoid a test failure, an expensive failure. Yes. So what we're checking now is it's giving mains voltage out. It's asking me for 233.7 perfect voltage, which is off the power supply coming in, and I'm reading 230. All oh, right. Okay, so you're, that's mains power into there, the box is reading. 233.7, quite yeah. precise, and then the box, this is close enough, we'd yeah. say. 234, 233. Yeah. Yeah, which is a pass. We're moving on to dead test now, so we're on continuity. So before I do anything, I'd unnull the tester, short the leads out. Null They're the your leads. leads. These are my leads, yes. Yeah. All the calibration leads. So I'm looking for a perfect score of 0.2, which gives me 0.21, which is a pass. That's a result. And then it goes all the way up to 1,000. I guess, no, how do you calibrate the calibrator? It has to go back to Transmill, the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And I've never asked them that question. All oh, right, okay. And then how do they calibrate their calibrator that calibrates the calibrator? With a calibrated tester. It's the chicken and the egg. There must be one in the world where they all go back to. And then we go from continuity to insulation. So we're looking for 250 volts injected. It had to be 250 volts or higher. So the machine's saying it's injecting 266.6 volts, which is a pass. What says the pass limit? Is that manual? Manufacturer's spec. It's the manufacturer's spec. It's normally plus or minus 10%. Right. Or plus or minus 5%, depending on which. And then, if you're lucky, you get a nice sticker and a certificate pops out the other end. How many testers are they do on all in all on each tester? Approximately 30. About 30 tests yeah. on each one. Yes, depending on the spec and what model it is. So if you're lucky, you get that certificate and a pass. If things don't quite go so well, you end up in the naughty corner that we've got down here. And these testers here need some, hmm, should we say, rectification if they can be fixed by the manufacturer. Obviously, once you've fixed it, you may need a software update. All becomes a little bit complicated. So bad news here, plenty of good news in the other corners as the testers go out. But just thought that's interesting to see what happens on a calibration day. And if you're looking for a new tester because you've ended up in the naughty corner, check out the video on screen now where we check out the latest TIS MFT Pro.